City Council for holiday and I know we had our Veterans uh, Day Parade and we had a ceremony as well which I believe went uh, over very well unfortunately I couldn't attend so but um, I think we also want to take a moment to reflect on our veterans past present we all had past present ones that served and, and, and served this country well and at the same time let's um, also think of the, uh, the poor people out in California that are going through a very very difficult difficult time and uh, how fortunate I guess we are at some point. So let's just take a couple minutes to reflect on that. Very good, so thank you very much. Mr. President, I also want to recognize and thank uh, Council Rodriguez for his service to the nation as well. I think he's the only sitting council that was a veteran. Congratulations, Council. Right. There you go. Maybe. <laughs> I want to know if he can still fit into that navy white suit. suit. That's yeah. what I want to know. Huh? <laughs> One leg, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm back, Mr. Clerk. Acceptance of the minutes of the October 22nd, 2018 City Council meeting. Accepted and placed on file. Councilor, we have item number two, which is the appointment of uh, City Clerk, Councilor Cruz. Motion to open nominations for second. the election of City Clerk. Motion been made and seconded to open up the nominations and... Mr. President, yes. it would give me great honor to nominate for re-election of that job, Anthony Zioli. Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. I have a motion to close... President, I make a motion to close nominations. Second. 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 Motion has been made and seconded to close nominations. All in favor of that? Opposed, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Mr. Zioli has been nominated to be the city clerk. ASAC, Tony Zioli. Beauregard, Tony Zioli. Cruz, Tony Zioli. Darren Court, Tony Zioli. Ian Airy, Anthony Zioli. Farwell, Anthony Zioli. Lally, Anthony Zioli. Monahan, my Paisan, Tony Zioli. Nicastro, Anthony Zioli. Rodriguez. Antonio Zioli. Hey, it's a nice. Sullivan. Mr. Anthony J. Zioli. Mr. Zioli is here. Is he here? He's here. Congratulations. Mr. President, move for reconsideration and hopes it does not prevail. Motion has been made for reconsideration and hopes it does not prevail. All in favor of reconsideration? All opposed? <laughs> Recon reconsideration fails. And just before we go any further uh, as, as well, uh, Mr. Zioli, I, I do want to take time to uh, thank Councilor Sullivan for uh, filling in. He was the immediate past president. I appreciate him filling in for the last uh, five weeks, six weeks. I, I lost track now. Six. 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 Yeah, I, I woke up this morning. It's amazing where I was about seven weeks ago. But uh, all in all, it's... Um, I'm sitting here comfortably too, and, and in a nice comfortable chair too, but uh, no, thank you, I appreciate you. it, and, and uh, I watched what, what went on, and uh, everybody did a, did a fine job too as well, so here we are, and uh, I guess we continue to move forward. Mr. Zioli. We have the report of the audience committee for its meeting of October 18, 2018. Accepted and placed on file. The real estate committee for its meeting of October 23rd, 2018. Accepted and placed on file. Report of the finance committee for its meeting of November 5th, 2018. That was accepted and, and placed on uh, file as well, and I think we just received them, if I'm not mistaken, today. Um, I just want to make a comment, though, because um, you know, I got my ones, and I think it was the minutes for uh, October's meeting from the last meeting I had chaired on September 24th. I was a little, little set back. I know everybody wants to see minutes, and everybody wants to see them, you know, to the length of... I don't know how long, I mean, but when I saw like eight, nine, 10, 12 pages, I was a little put back to, you know, how, how are we taking minutes, to be truthful with it, because I was always taught that, I, I thought minutes were a synopsis to a meeting, not uh, an evolute to, you know, everything that gets said and what color necktie you have on as well. 
but um, and I have you know I, I don't have the other ones for October first. I didn't see them, but I'm going to talk to Mel because as chair of the uh, of the subcommittee um, finance subcommittee that is, I I do want to uh, talk to her and see just how they're getting done because I just I just think it's a little bit you know a little bit a little bit too far fetched, but um, and for whatever reason. And obviously, I guess what we're doing now, a minutes for everything that's transpiring, is that, is that correct, Mr. Clerk? Is that what you're hearing? Is that we're doing everything that happens, real estate, public safety, ordinance. Yep. Yeah, is, yeah. That's a new format because we never really did it to that type of right. event. Yeah. 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 They're, they're told to provide the action and the subject that's being handled. Okay. And the vote on it. Yeah, it, it just, you know, um, it just caught me when I was reading through some of them. And, and I mean, verbatim, I, okay, but when I, I go back to my history years on the school committee, I mean, it was just what I said. It's a synopsis. It's, that's what it's supposed to be. And if not, then you go back and you listen to the tape. You go back and you listen to the to the recording. But in any case, um, um, I just want to, I'll, I'll talk to Mel on that. May I just say, Counselor? The, the minutes that you're referring to, it was the the, uh, the woman's first night taking minutes, and so I I think she did you know what she's perhaps done in the past. Okay. But it was her very first night. Okay. I noticed the ones that I saw today were a little bit more lesser information. So I mean that that's the way I looked at them because and, and I'm not <coughs> trying to be rude, but the next time you know the next thing you know you're gonna have people taking minutes like that and. And people are going to say in their next negotiations, well, if I'm going to be doing that for the city council, then I need to have an increase. So here you go again. You know what I mean? That's the things you have to watch out for. But in any case, counselor. I, I just, as, as what attorney, uh, now Judge Gilday had always told us, it, it needs to be accurate and concise, but it should be a summarization of the discussion of the committee. Right. So, and again, it was her first, first. so maybe she went a little overboard. Okay. But um, maybe just a gentle reminder, you know, it, it, it can't be, you know, too basic that, it wouldn't meet the standards of the law, right. but it, it doesn't need to be overly broad. Okay. okay. Could have been her. Could have been. I don't could know. Have been. Beatty, I know Beatty left in October, right? Uh, that first week, I believe she left around. So she could have been it one. Could have been. Could have yeah. been. Yeah. Yeah. Any case, all right. But I just, I just, you know, seeing it and seeing it as chairman of the committee, I just felt like, you know, it, it was a little bit too much. But anyhow, continue on. Uh, Communication from the chief of police request of the city council authorized to expend grant monies. Any amount of $680,516 from the U.S. Department of Justice Office of Justice Program, Fiscal 18 Strategies for Police Innovation Grant to the City of Brockton Police Department, Fiscal 18 Strategies for Police and Innovation Grant Fund. Accepted and placed on file. From the mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. The CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. From the Director of Planning requested the City Council authorized the proposed HDIP tax increment exemption mm -hmm. agreement for the market rate housing development proposed, proposed for 47 West Down Street. The local exemption is the one of the two incentives for the development of market rate housing in Gateway Cities. The second incentive is state tax credit awarded by DHCD. Accepted and placed on file. Recommended by the mayor. Accepted and placed on file. CFO relative to the, uh, of the CFO. Accepted and placed on file. We have number 12, right? The, uh, I just wanted to see. I don't know if he had stipulations. No, he doesn't. Okay. No. Ordered that the sum of $5 million is appropriated to pay additional costs of developing a parking garage and for making streets and traffic improvements within the development district approved by the city and being undertaken in conjunction with Trinity Financial, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 40Q, the District Improvement Financing Statute, Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, and or uh, any other en enabling authority, and to issue bonds and notes of the city, therefore, that such bonds and notes shall be general obligations of the city. Although such bonds and notes shall be payable in the first instance from property tax revenue expected to be derived from the new development within the development district, the amount authorized to be borrowed pursuant to this order shall be expended in addition to all amounts previously appropriated by the city for this project, as well as all other amounts received by the city from the Commonwealth of Mass 
and from Trinity Financial to pay costs of the project. Audit any premium received by the city upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this audit, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds and notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this order in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Order that the City Treasurer is authorized to file an application with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Municipal Finance Oversight Board to qualify under Chapter 44A of the General Laws any and all bonds and notes of the city authorized by this vote, and to provide such information and execute such documents as a municipal finance oversight board of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts may require. In Council, September 24, 2018, Reading Fair Standing Committee on Finance, that report was favorable. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Eneary? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Order that the City Council hereby declare the Whitman School at 25 Bannermet Street, map 059, parcel 046, as surplus and available for disposition and sale to the most advantageous uh, proposer after soliciting requests for proposals and further that the mayor be and hereby is authorized to execute any and all documents necessary to dispose of said property. In council September 24th, read and referred to the standing committee on real estate. That report was favorable. Council Monahan. Make a motion for an amendment. Motion uh, to accept the amendment. Negative. Motion to remain second to accept the amendment. All in favor? Opposed? So be. Okay, be. I hereby move to amend the foregoing order to read as follows. The aforementioned property is to be made available as surplus subject to the historic restoration of the exterior facade and as much of the existing structure remain as possible. On, on, on the motion. On the motion, Council. I'd like to um, consider uh, adding on to that verbiage the following. Uh, I think Council Monahan remain as possible, period. I'd like to say and this shall be deemed as a condition precedent to said declaration of surplus disposition and sale. Just kind of tightens it up and it's, it's a condition that the amendment won't go away tonight. It would carry on to the RFP or anything else that the mayor's office would produce for a potential sale. Okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So that motion's been made in a uh, second to, to accept that. All in favor of this? Uh, I don't think there was a second on that, right? Second. second. All in favor? Opposed? Now the, now the question is on adoption by a, uh, adoption by a, a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, as amended. That's the question, as amended. Ajax? Yes. Beauregard? No. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. That's 10 in the affirmative, one uh, Sullivan says yes, too. Sullivan, your name's not on this list. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. President. The order is adopted. As amended? As amended. <laughs> I, we're all set. Councilor Isaac. On the next item, before you read, I would just like to recognize that we do have members of the Montello Business Association here mm -hmm. who are very concerned about the future of the Howard School and what will happen in the, at that property. Um, so I, I explained to them that it is in a public hearing. They, um, some of them have attended uh, the real estate meeting. Right. But I just want to recognize that they are in the audience this evening. Thank That's you. great. Thank you. Thank you for attending. It's, it's the process that has to be taken so that we can get to the level so we can continue to move forward. So that's what's happening here this evening. Mr. Clerk? Mr. President, Council Council Sullivan. On that. I, I got a call as well from a gentleman that's here. And I just want to make it clear to everybody, I know the council knows this, Chapter 40 R Smart Growth Zoning does not extend as far down uh, as this uh, property is located. Um, it, 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 stopped, uh, it stopped in the downtown, the five parameters of downtown, the right. five zones. It doesn't go that far up. It doesn't go that far I just wanted to go on record saying that. I think there was some confusion. People thought that that was within the Smart Growth District. It's, to my knowledge, it's, it's not because I'm the one that drafted the Smart Growth. Right, right. That's fine. 
order that the city council hereby declare the Howard School at 849 North Bay Street, map 103, parcel 090, surplus and available for disposition and sale to the most advantageous proposer after soliciting requests for proposals. And further, that the mayor be and hereby is authorized to execute any and all documents necessary to dispose of said property. In council, September 24, 2018, ready to refer the standing committee on real estate. That report was favorable. The questions on the amendment. All in favor? Opposed, council? Uh, on on that, the amendment? I, I, I'd like to, uh, the ward council, council Act, to consider the verbiage that I just added to the ward two council. I think that that language should be baked into the amendment. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to have the following wording um, included in the amendment. Go ahead. Second. And, Go ahead. And this shall be deemed as a condition precedent to said declaration of surplus, disposition, and sale. Motion. Second. Second motion was made and second to accept the amendment. All in favor? Opposed? The amendment's been accepted. The question now uh, is on the adoption as amended by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Council. Motion. Go ahead, Council Fowler. Mr. Ch uh, President and members of the Council, th this particular parcel is very different than the Whitman School. This is a 2.66 acre parcel at one of the most prominent intersections in the city. It is an intersection that is already heavily congested with traffic. There is a Montello fire station to the north of this intersection. There are schools to the west on Oak Street. We're being asked by the administration, after this building being empty for quite some time, to declare it as surplus. Now, we referred this to the real estate committee, which, which met. Uh, we still don't know, even after that meeting, what's the approximate value that the city may anticipate receiving for the sale of that property. Number two, there is no condition that if this property were to be sold to a nonprofit, that at least a pilot, a payment in lieu of taxes, would be required of the nonprofit who might purchase that property and, and develop it and do something with it. Uh, number three, we don't know if that building has been inspected by our building department to make sure that we're not going to deem it surplus and then have the same thing that happened at 47 West Elm Street happen that oh, suddenly we've got to demolish the building or we've got to do mold remediation. And la lastly, and, and this is the one that really intrigues me, we have a professional planning department. Is there nothing, is there no option that they're considering for the development of this property? Shouldn't we as a city council have some idea as to what might happen with that property if we declare it surplus? So I'm sitting here, and I would suggest, unless some of you know information that I don't, let's say we vote this tonight, and somebody from the Montello Business Association or some other constituent walks up and says, well, what do you think you're going to get for the property? I don't know. What do you think the city is going to do with the property? I don't know. Has the property been inspected, and you're sure that you're not going to end up with another 47 West Elm Street situation? I don't know. Could it be purchased by a nonprofit, and will you get any tax revenue out of it? The answer is no, if it's purchased by a nonprofit. So, you know, at, at some point, and I'm being critical of myself as well as the council as a body, as a team. If we're going to be an effective council, it just seems to me we ought to vet out some basic information about what happens to a huge parcel of property at a prominent intersection in the city. I don't believe Mayor Walsh would put something like this in front of the city council in Boston and say, no, I'm not going to tell you what you're going to get for it. Well, I'm not going to tell you what we're going to do with it. Well, I'm not going to tell you if it's been inspected. And I'm not going to tell you if you might have to come up with some money to address issues within that building. Now, I realize this building is in Ward 7, and I called the ward councilor over the weekend, and I appreciate the time that she spent on the phone with me, and I asked if this could go back so that we could ferret out some information about those issues, and she's adamantly opposed to it and feels that we should not put restrictions on developers. I, I respect her opinion, 
So the next thing I did is I looked at the minutes of the meeting, which ironically we were talking about minutes earlier. These are the minutes of the real estate committee. Doesn't even mention the mayor was there. Doesn't even mention Rob May was there. Doesn't have a summary of any discussion. References a motion apparently made by Councilor DeCastro, which was defeated on a three to two vote. Doesn't even include that. There is nothing in here. These minutes are kept not so much for us. These minutes are posted so that the public can have some idea of what goes on in a, in a subcommittee meeting. It's a requirement that from the Attorney General's office that you have to have the decisions made and actions taken, summary of the discussions in each subject, a list of all documents and exhibits used at the meeting. Now I couldn't go to the meeting, so I was going to rely on the minutes of the Real Estate Committee. Come on folks, we've got to do a better job. And that includes me if I'm Chairman of Public Safety or some other subcommittee. But you know, in, a, in an era where transparency in government is supposed to be paramount, is this transparency in government? We're going to vote tonight to declare that size parcel at that location surplus, and we have absolutely no idea what Mr. May or the mayor have planned for that location. Somebody's got to know something or it wouldn't have ended up on the agenda. I mean, it can't be vacant for six to ten years and suddenly pop up for no reason at all. Somebody knows something. Somebody's got an idea. Let's do this. Let's do that. I don't mind that. I, I mean, I think we should develop the site. I think we should derive some revenue from that. But the job that's been done so far, I think, is just woefully inadequate. Now, I always tell every one of you, however you vote on this tonight, I always have respect for your vote and for your opinions and for what you decide. But I'm going to vote no. I am not going to walk out of here tonight and walk into somebody tomorrow that I might know as a counselor at large and have them ask me a basic question and I've got to say, I don't know. I mean, that's preposterous. Is, is that what government is all about? Why do we use subcommittees to ferret out information, to, to plan and organize perhaps requirements on properties that are being turned over to be surplus? And so if I, if I sound a bit passionate about it tonight, it's because I don't want to let the, the residents down. I mean, that's why we're here. This property is actually owned by the residents of Brockton. It's not owned by the mayor. It's not owned by Mr. May. It's not owned by Ward 7. It's owned by the people in the city. The, ordinance sa the order says we want the most advantageous deal, and we don't even have any facts in front of us that would let us believe what deal might be pending. I, so I, 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 I'm, I'm just going to vote no, and as I say, I respect everyone else's opinion. I, I, think, I think in respect to you, Councillor, if, if I can recall, because I was one back and you weren't sitting here then when I had requested that even the Whitman School, the Howard School, to go out for an RFP, we did it the same way back then. We have no clue to what type of a person is going to even bid or, or even take a look at what they want to do with the property, to be truthful with you. I think you need to find that out first before you come in and say, we want this, 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 and this. That's my personal opinion. You know? And that's been sitting there for I don't know how many years you're correct. And I, I don't know if some people recall, don't forget, it had two other stories that burned many years ago. Okay, and, and the lower level even had a problem. I don't know if you were on the school committee with me then or not. I don't think you were. I think that was, you were when the Ellis Pret burned as well. But um, still, I understand what you're saying. But I mean, uh, you know, in order to get the process going and the wheel turn, and I, I don't think there's hidden agendas. I think it's the process that has to get things going. I really do. I, I know everyone wants to think that we have hidden agendas, and I'm getting a little tired of hearing about everything's a hidden agenda and, and, and everything belongs to the people. Yeah, it, it does belong to the people. But in order to try, here we go, in order to try to bring revenue to the city, we stop. Well, hold that. That's not how we do it. Well, how else do you do it? That, that is not what I said. Well, that's I said the way I options. Take it. What are the options that we might reasonably you expect to be used? For that. Right, I, I thought I did, but no. Thank you. That's yeah. My apologies. Yeah. But I'm just, I'm just saying that, I mean, that's. That's the problem that we seem to have every time we want to do something. And I understand people want to be involved. And I had conversation today. The council called me up, and we had a lengthy conversation. And her, her concerns based upon your conversation as well. And I understand the people that are here. And uh, you know, it seemed that when we did put out to bid back, I God, I don't know. I think it was back in 2009, to 2010, and and nobody nobody even chumped at it. To be truthful with you, and no one came forth and even said anything about. 
All I heard was, what a great corner for a drugstore. What a great corner for a CVS. It didn't happen there. <laughs> now, here we, here we got a chunk of land that we could do something with it and say, whoa, wait a minute. But anyhow, uh, you know, I'm, I'll let my Councilor Rodriguez. Uh, okay, and then I'll go to Councilor Rodriguez. He's chairman of real yeah, estate. This, is, and just a, this has been, this is, all this is is the process, beginning of the process. I've That's been right. on a couple of committees already. It's, depending on what the ward is, Ward 2, we, you, when, once we put this out of surplus, you're going to meet with the BRA, you're going to meet with the planning department. You're going to sit down and decide what the RFP is going to look like. Then if somebody does buy it, does go, give us an offer from their city, the, the city does not have to accept the uh, offer on the RFP. So whatever that ha happens, and it, so if they accept it, then you're going to go back in and figure out what you want. And you can have, you're going to have a meeting in your ward to see what the residents want. So it's the beginning of a process. There's no hidden agendas. There's no non-transparency. I mean, this is all out in the open. And you're going to be going there. We've had a meeting about the Lincoln School uh, a few weeks back. The, 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 uh, the residents came in. They spoke about it. What do they want going forward? And, the, and, the, and they agree with it. So I mean, it's just a process. Nothing more than that. And uh, you know, we got to really can't keep on sending it to finance or this, that, the other thing. Like you say, we want to get this thing moving and rolling. Who knows? Nobody might even bid on it at all. We had that problem already. Again. So anyway, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council. Council Rodriguez. Uh, <coughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. President. You're welcome. Um, Mr. I, Chairman. Are you Chairman or President today? <laughs> you're Mr. President. You're Chair of the Real Estate. Oh, it, yeah. Okay, that's good yeah, enough. Go. Um, I, I find it fascinating how in, on item 13, I think the only council that voted against it was Council Beauregard. Everybody thought it was the greatest thing since apple pie. Now all of a sudden, 14, which is exactly the same thing, which is a school for a school, all of a sudden we have barriers to it. Um, I live in the city as well. I don't know, maybe some of the, some of the councilors do not, but uh, I drive by that, by that um, corner every morning to go to work and back into town, buy it. What's there now is not appealing to the eye. It's not appealing to any business. It's not appealing to the neighbors and friends and family that I live, that I have living in that corner, in that area. And it's been an eyesore for quite some time. But I think this process is a start. It's a start process to open the door to see what's out there. You throw something out in hopes that you'd get something in return. I think I made this very clear, I think the first time that we were discussing making these properties available for sale, one of the things that I said was that it has to be recorded on every single document, and I think the mayor, and the reason why we, we put in the city councilor from those wards as part of the, uh, the reviewing process is so that we have an input in what happens to those properties. But at the same time, that they are not to be sold to nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. Legally, we, we cannot put that on, in writing. But we understand that when the proposal comes into the city, the city can pick, it says it right here, the most advantageous offer that comes into the city. That to me tells me that we're looking at something that makes money for the city. Makes money for the city, that the neighbors are okay with it, and that there's a whole process in place. We're not out here deciding on what piece of property is being developed in that piece of land. We're saying put it out there and see what happens. There's still a whole process that has to go into play, you know, with planning, zoning, and all these other things that come into effect. But if we don't even open that up, that process is dead on arrival. And that piece of land that I saw that we have in that city. And frankly, I don't know how a business can sit across the street from it looking at that monstrosity until it, when it starts falling apart like some of the other things that we have in this community, that it's good for business in that corner. It can't be, you know. But it gets to a point where it gets a little frustrating for me especially, to be honest with you. I know the Council Farwell brought up the, the minutes. Those are the same minutes that have been coming to this body since I've been on this council. And I've been the chair of that committee for, I think, two years. So prior to that, it was the same minutes that continues to come. We had a discussion. The mayor was there. The planning officer was there. The, the development was there. The, the city solicitor was there. So it was an animated discussion that we, we currently, we, that we had at that, at that meeting. But it gets to a point where I sense that, again, 
On item number 13, exact the same thing. There were no objections to it. Nobody objected. But 14, which is exact the same thing, because there's some squeaking going on, all of a sudden we were objecting to this. And you know what? It's all well and good that we're sitting here, we're talking about transparency, we want to be transparent. We also want to be fair. And that's the issue I have. It's in fairness. If it's not good for the residents on the north side of the city, it should not be good for the residents of Ward 2. Because Whitman School, those folks are going to be living around whatever comes into play that we just decided to give it to the mayor. And there's a lot more congestion that goes into Whitman, the, the Whitman School than there would be at Howard School. At least the Howard School is in the middle of two you know, pretty busy uh, roadways in the city, whereas the Whitman School sits in the middle of a neighborhood. So to me, I would be more worried about what goes into the Whitman School than I would be at Howard School. But the fact that we did not have any objections to the Whitman School, where it's surrounded on an en enclave in the sense, surrounded by housing and, and neighbors and stuff like that, but all of a sudden, because we have a few businesses or a few people uh, objecting to this, all of a sudden we're bringing this to the, to the forefront as one of the major issues that we have going on to a point where I don't see anything or no one showed up and said, hey, listen, instead of proposing to build a, a bakery, let's build a, um, a hotel. There was nothing. There's nothing. We're not sitting here turning anything down because there's nothing to turn down. And the only way we would know what to turn down is by putting it out there and see what happens. And I seriously object sending this thing back to, to real estate because you know what? We cannot continue to walk and, and then backpedal again because this item was brought into the council. It was refer when it was first discussed in the council, it was referred to, uh, to real estate. Right. If people objected to it, it should have been that night that we should have sent it to finance. We chose to send it to real estate, and some of us have things to do in this community. We can't continue to go vote on something, work on something, and then come back to this body and say, ah, well, let's ship it back to what it is because I don't like the way it was. It, it, it was uh, it, my friends don't like the way it's going. You know what? I have a real problem with it. I'm going to vote yes on this. I'm not going to vote to send it to a committee. And if it goes to real estate, as long, so as long as I'm a, the chair of real estate, it's going to die there. Thank you, Mr. Mr. You're President. Welcome. You're welcome, Council. Any other uh, Council, Council in the cast room? Or? Thank you. Good yes. evening, Mr. President. Cruz, yeah. um, I just Thank have a know. couple of comments about what everyone said, and, um, and I will say that, I'll say it at the end. Um, first of all, as to what you said, I, I understand this property last came up for, to be sold in 2009 and 2010, which were on the heels of, of the Great Recession beginning in 2008. There was no market for commercial buildings or anything. Those were terrible times. Right now we're having a very hot market in Brockton, even in Brockton, as someone said to me the other day, for residential and for commercial properties. I would expect there are buyers, there are people who will be interested in this property. The second thing is, um, speaking to someone else, this isn't, the Whitman School and, and the Howard School are not apples to apples. The Whitman School is on a very small piece of property. It's a small school. It's, it's in a residential area, you know, not far from Belmont Street. Whereas the Howard School is 2.66 acres. You can really do something with the Howard School. It's also in the middle of a commercial property on a busy street, not apples to apples by a long shot. Um, so I see differences. What I'm concerned about, and Councillor Azak and I talked about this today, I'm concerned that we get the best bidder that we do very well on this, okay? And I'm not going to be involved in that process. I'm also concerned that if a nonprofit does give us a very good bid, that we accept their, their bid with the understanding that they will sign a payment in lieu of taxes agreement with us that is acceptable to the city. That matters a lot to me. I thought that might be worthwhile to, to attach to an RFP or to attach, to amend our motion tonight to, to go forward with that understanding because I was afraid it would get lost afterwards. Um, and so that, that was what I was going to put out to all of you tonight. Um, I don't want to see this go back, but I also feel that the minutes of the real estate meeting are, are deficient. I was there. I took better notes than what, what is in those minutes. But we can work on that. 
Thank you very I'll much. Say, Council. Council Cruz. Uh, thank you. I just um, I, I agree with uh, with the president of the real estate committee. I think people are confusing what the process is here. This is not a tax title taking that goes to a bid process. This goes to an RFP. The RFP, we can't as a council attach an assistance on a payment in lieu of taxes, but we can put pressure on, and my, I would almost certainly guarantee that a request for pro proposals is going to mention that if it's not a taxable piece of property, you will pay a payment in lieu of taxes. The other thing is the city, the city it does not, is not forced to take the highest bid on an RFP. The RFP, somebody will come in, propose what they want to do, they might pay a dollar, and if it's a better thing for the city, the city can say, we're going to take that, as opposed to somebody that wants to give us $200,000. It's just that. It's request for proposals for the best possible use of the land for the city. And there's the only way we're going to know, I mean, the question that kept sticking into me as a, you know, somebody that's in business is, how do we know what it's worth? We don't know what it's worth because we don't have that request for proposals out there yet piece of property is worth what somebody will pay you for it. And we don't know what somebody will pay for it. There's not a possible way in the world to say we should get 50000 or 100000 300000 a million. There is no way because that piece of property is worth something to somebody either in their business or maybe it is a nonprofit. And I would hope that when we get to the RFP that we push away from any nonprofit taking over that piece of property because it's not a, for the city a best possible use of that property. We have lots of non-profits non in the city who do some great work, but we can, the city can say through the mayor's office, who will do the RFP with, with the, uh, with uh, Mike Morris's office right. Right. and the city planner. This is what we want. You can give stipulations. You can give direction on what you expect to see down there. Bamsey or somebody can come in, and the city can say thank you, but no thank you. It doesn't matter how much money they want to give you. We can say no, thank you. This is not a piece of auction property from a tax title taking where we have to take the highest bid, although actually the, the auctioneer can refuse a bid on that also. I, I don't get what, why, uh, you know, I, I think there are some people here who think the mayor has people sneaking up behind them to buy pieces of property. This, there is no, there were businesses that looked at this years ago. Mm -hmm. There was a computer business that w was dying to move in there and the building couldn't handle, the electrical in the building couldn't handle what he wanted to do at the time, and he had to walk away. That's why we have to do a request for proposals. Let developers come in from outside the city. It may be some of the businesses that are in that area. It may be worth something to them. Maybe even just for parking. It may be somebody who breaks up the piece of property as long as it's done the way the city looks at that it's the best possible use for the piece of property. For the, to the advantages, the advantages of the city and the people that live in the area. The idea of sending it back and the questions that were raised, I think are specious and I think are actually hidden to, because some people don't trust the mayor's office on this. We need to move forward. The committee did its work. I think it's time to vote on this and let's get moving on it. Thank you, Council. Council Lally? All right. Uh, I just wanted to touch upon, you know, the, one of the uh, the first things I did as a counselor was, you know, we, we all put out uh, to bid the property on Howard Street for the sports complex. Um, and, and that was, you know, that was right off the bat, a, a, a very good learning experience. But I've, you know, I've worked through, and I know Councillor Monaghan's uh, <laughs> done a couple of these as well. Um, we work with, the ward counselor works with, you know the people we we're, we're helping look at the bids we're helping determine uh, what bid is the best bid and if we do not feel like you know we're there to represent uh, the neighbors you know the the people who live in the area and if if the ward counselor determines that this is not a good project for the area or whatever the, the none of the proposals that have been received would benefit the city then we can just decide, you know, this is where we're, we're requesting proposals. That's it. We don't have to pick one. We're just saying, hey, we'd like to see what you want to do with this property. And that's, that's a, the sports complex was a little different because, you know, it was zoned and set up to find somebody who wanted to build a sports complex. But, you know, um, going to, to something Councillor Beauregard, uh, you know, loves to, loves to mention, you know, a very good point. 
Uh, the restaurant space in uh, the Trinity project. Still empty, right, Councillor? That's a, uh, that's a case of, of, of zone it and they will come. You know, we can't, we, it's, it's not our, you know, us as, us as councillors or, or the planning board or the planning department or the mayor, we're, we can't, you know, just decide what, what's going to get built in there and then just wait for people to come build it for us. You know, we're going to say, we, what we're doing basically is saying, we're interested to see what you have to offer. Tell us what, tell us what you're willing to do with this property and we'll, uh, we'll think about it. That's it. You know, we can, we take the offers from the nonprofits. We don't have to pick them. Uh, I wouldn't, you know, this isn't, this isn't my ward. I wouldn't be on the deciding committee, but I personally wouldn't want to see any nonprofit coming in that wouldn't be paying the full weight in taxes anyway. They do good work, but we've got a lot of them, and we, right. need, we need things to contribute to the tax base. Um, the, the value and everything else, you know, the assessor, can, the assessor can say it's worth however much. Nobody's going to pay it. What's the point? It's, it's only, you know, you know, the only purpose of an accurate uh, assessment in that case is once it's a, you know, taxable private property. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Sullivan, before I go to yeah, Councilor Isaac. Yeah, I, I just want to say, I, I mean, I respect, I respect immensely when. I mean, he, he brings up valid points. The only thing I can say is, someone that's been here 13 years is we've done this many many times and it's just the start of the process it's it's we're, we're the legislative body we, we're we're charged to make a decision if we should di dis dispose of property and if we are it's a condition to the rfp process beginning um i appointed moses when i was president last year to serve as chair i think he does yeoman's work but at the end of the day 10 years ago and i went to the whitman school and when you went to whitman school I fought Jimmy Harrington because I didn't think the Whitman School at that time should have been deposed, mm. disposed. However, you put out to an RFP when Monaghan was, and he's, he's still there, God love him, one, two. Um, but at the end of the day, the zoning didn't even allow for anybody to bid on it. They couldn't do it. Um, it is apples to oranges. I mean, Mrs. Hancock's house is right next door to the Whitman School, like this close. So we want to make sure that That's it right. doesn't have a negative impact on the neighborhood. Same thing on Howard. We want to make sure that the, the, the you know, uh, Wade's Funeral Home and all the people that are spending their taxes up there and, and doing a good job for the city of Brockton are protected as well. But the only way we can do that is to begin the process. Um, I concur with, with Sue. I think we should somehow bake in a clause about a pilot program. <coughs> but bear in mind, only the mayor can generate a pilot agreement with a buyer. Uh, we don't have the authority. Um, but I, I respect Shirley and Tom, and I know that when they sit at these meetings, they're going to fight for the ward. They're going to fight for the city. Uh, and we'll be in good hands. I will ask that they report back to us and give us status updates. I think that that would be extremely important if they sit in on meetings just so we're all in the loop. So if someone does ask us what the hell's going on and we don't look like, you know, Mickey the Dunce because we don't know the answer. But I, but I think if we delay this and we send it to FENCOM, we've done that before, we send it to FENCOM, it's just going to be us speaking again to Rob May or the mayor if he shows, which is highly unlikely, and then that's not going to accomplish anything. The accomplishment is to send it forward, begin the process, get the ball rolling, and make sure that Councilor Monahan and Councilor Azak are fighting for that property vis-a-vis -vis the RFP. And at that time, when it goes to all the local boards, we, as elected officials and as taxpayers, that's what we all are, we can go and say, no, I don't, I don't think that's right. Or, you know what, Wade's Funeral Home, you know, Mr. Belcher called me and he has a lot of concerns about traffic. You should all have concerns about traffic. That's the only way. So I think we need to move it forward, um, but I also think we need to, to listen to what Wynn said as we move through on the process. Because at the end of the day, it is owned by all the taxpayers. Um, but it's, it's not doing any good right now when I drive by the Whitman School and all the windows are smashed and I'm calling Jimmy Casseri to put up boards, you know, and Howard Street, it's, it's, it's a shame the way it is, you know? And Chris McMillan was, was before Shirley, the Wood Council, as you remember, we had money um, that we uh, retrofitted a handicapped playground. It lasted about six months and we had to bring it back out because the place was falling apart. And then just remember this, it was an asset not owned by the city of Brockton, it was a school asset that we had to accept when they decided they weren't going to have schools anymore. We, the council, accepted it. So I, I just think we need to move forward, but we need to do it collaboratively and make sure that 
everything that we hear from the people that are calling us and the people we represent is addressed, and we'll see where the chips fall. I mean, people might say, I'm not spending a penny on that place. Who knows? But that's my, that's my two cents. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Azak, and then we'll go back Thank to you, Council. Mr. President. And I just want to let my colleagues and the business owners and residents that have come contacted me regarding this matter that your concerns were heard and I did address them. I even questioned our, um, I asked our um, council regarding the pilot, uh, putting an amendment with that and I was, I, I don't know if Shannon you'd like to speak on this, but uh, she felt that it, we didn't need to do that the, this evening. So yeah. I did address that. It just relates so. to our contract provision and as Councilor Sullivan pointed out, the contracting authority in the city of Brockton is through the mayor's department. Thank you, Shannon. So, I mean, with but you can strongly recommend that it be baked into the RFP. Definitely, yeah. and that's what I plan on doing, as well as other concerns that were brought up by my some of my colleagues and the um, business owners that have contacted me. So, as Councilor Sullivan said, I will be there fighting, and that's what I'm relying on is that where I'm going to be at the table and when I say I'm going to be at the table that means we're going to be at the table as I do everything I have always communicated anything that I've been involved in with the ward with the rest of my colleagues so it won't be any different with this every any time you have any questions I've always brought whatever I've learned to you and vice I'd expect the same thing vice versa so um, that's all I can say is I will be there and I know uh, Councilor Monahan's had has already started uh, with the Lincoln School. I know whether, no matter how you feel about it, that was one of the, this past year, they had the meetings. So these are open meetings. And the concerns shouldn't stop here. They have to continue, as Council Sullivan said, when, you know, whoever gets the, the bids, hopefully we do have developers that want to invest in the city of, Bro of Brockton. So we, they need to go to zoning and traffic, and we need to be present at these meetings and uh, be part of the process instead of it, it, you know, when the finished product is here and everybody's not, you know, hopefully everybody would be happy, but be part of the process. Thank you, Mr. President. Same, Council. No, we'll go to Council Fowle, then we'll wrap up. Council yeah. Fowle. Just to summarize, yeah. I uh, thank the good Lord these meetings are on tape because I never made a motion to postpone. I, ne I never suggested that, so the comments that we need, to know, we need to move forward and we can't send it back, that was not my, that was not a motion by me. To Councilor Cruz, I would say you certainly can tell the approximate value of his property. Just ask the city solicitor to tell us. That's what they do in other communities. In the city of Marlboro, when their city council is asked to declare a piece of property surplus, the city assessor tells the council, this is what approximately, if you receive a successful bid, you should receive that amount of money. To my friend and fellow councilor at large, uh, Moises Rodriguez, you're right, these are the type of minutes that we've been getting historically. But that's before we just answered a complaint about open meeting law violations, and I don't want to see another one. Okay, so let's, let's put a summary of the comments in. Let's do what we're, we're required to do. So I do understand the process. My argument tonight, ironically, was just to say to all of you, I thought we deserved a little bit more information. I thought Mr. May could have, could have at least come before us and said, you know, we want to put this property out because I think this is what we can do with it. This is how I think we can improve that corner. And the pilot I mentioned and the inspection by the building inspector, all Mr. Caseri had to do was come in and say, we've looked at the Howard School. It is not like 47 West Elm Street. We will not be coming back to you for two or $300,000 to remediate anything. So I was arguing that as a body, we just deserved a little more information if you're going to ask for our vote. And had I known that there were ongoing meetings with ward counselors and issues were discussed and we had even had an email or some type of summary, I would have felt a lot better about it. But, but I, I didn't know that. I don't know what meetings have been held or what was discussed. So maybe we ought to refine our process to share information when a ward counselor has a meeting with planning about a particular piece of property, just share the information with us. Here's what I discussed, here's, here's what I recommended, now we can go forward and I'm comfortable with that. I really am. So I thank you all for your indulgence this evening and I was just explaining why I was going to vote no. I was not suggesting delaying this any further. I mean, there's one thing I can do in politics, I can count votes. So I, I kind of knew where we were. 
<coughs> Thank you, Council. We're all set. I think we already voted on the uh, the amendment, Pat. So now the question is on adoption. <coughs> As amended by a roll call, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? No. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? No. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? No. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Eight in the affirmative, three in the negative. The order is adopted. Councilor Sullivan. Uh, in the spirit of what Councilor Fowler said, I'm going to respectfully ask that you, as the president in your capacity, ask uh, Mr. O'Donnell, the assessor, to do a written evaluation of an estimate on those two values and then get it to the council. Uh, I, I, I think it's a brilliant idea. I think it should be, should be done. And I also, through you, Mr. President, I believe the minutes are taken by Mr. Brophy in his capacity as a real estate custodian they need to be uh, revised brushed up a little yes. bit yes yeah. thank you I, I will follow up and thank talk you. with mr o'donnell uh, i'll get a call into him tomorrow and uh, see what i can get uh, for information you're welcome next item mr yeah. clerk <coughs> point of mario loan salves 23 smith avenue brockton it's council city of brockton for a term of three years and council october 22nd 2018 ready for the standing committee on finance report is favor <coughs> the question is on confirmation by a roll call vote madam clerk please call the roll ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative? The order is adopted. Mr. President, I'll make a motion. Council Cruz. 16 through 18 collectively. Second. 16, 17, and 18 collectively. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? We'll take them collectively, Mr. Clerk. Aye. Appointment <clears throat> of board, more up. 11 Bellevue Avenue. As a constable of the city of Brockton for a term of three years, the appointment of Deborah Hodges Pebblehorn, 21 Field Street, Brockton, to the Brockton Cultural Council for a six year term. Reappointment of James C. Doucette, 260 Story Street, as a constable of the city of Brockton for a term of three years. <coughs> In council, October 22nd, 2018, ready for the Standing Committee on Finance, that was voted as favor. The question is on confirmation by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative? The orders are adopted. Order that the City Council authorize the acceptance of expenditures of additional grant funds in the amount of $50,000 from Mass Department of Public Health Legislative Earmark Funding Grant, the City of Brockton Police Department Legislative Earmark Funding Grant, Fund in Council October 22nd, 2018. Ready to refer to Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. The question is on adoption by roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Voted that the City Council authorizes <laughs> expect acceptance and expenditures of additional grant funds any amount of $39,350.50 from the U.S. Department of Justice Fiscal 2018 Bulletproof Vest Program Grant to the City of Brockton Police Department Fiscal 2018 Bulletproof Vest Program Fund. And Council, I read and refer to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative? The order is adopted. An appropriation of $24,507.10 from unappropriate estimate receipts for the general fund, fiscal 19, to FEMA reimbursement, $18,315.32, fiscal 17, state 911 grant, $4,785.02, fiscal 18, 911 training, $774.30. The question is on adoption I'm by. So, I'm sorry, oh. one more item. School repair, roof repairs, $632.46. In council, October 22nd, 2018. Reading for the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. Questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. 
Asak? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Enary? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Castro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Total appropriation of $700,000 from the unappropriate estimate receipts of the General Fund Fiscal 19 to the Stabilization Fund and Council October 22nd, 2018. Very in favor of the Standing Committee on Finance. I report as favorable. Motion is on adoption by roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Resolved to invite Larry Raleigh, the head of the Department of Public Works, and a representative for traffic to discuss with the City Council the situation with snow removal, parking on streets, and other concerns that arise during the winter months. In Council, October 22nd, 2018, reading for the Standing Committee on Finance, that report was favorable. Questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Resolved to invite Larry Raleigh, the head of the Department of Public Works for the city, to inform the city council and public with an update of the new street lights. And council, October 22nd, 2018. Ready for the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. Questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Crowell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. Order is adopted. An ordinance amending Chapter 2 of the revised ordinances. Be it hereby ordered that an ordinance amending Chapter 2 of the revised ordinances dated February 12, 2018, be amended by inserting G at the beginning of the text, whereby entirely of said an ordinance amending Chapter 2 of the revised ordinances shall be a continuation of Article 13, Section 11 211, and shall be inserted into said section 11 2 dash, I'm sorry, 11 211 as subsection G to continue after subsection F. I refer to the committee on ordinance. An ordinance amending chapter 2 of the revised ordinances dated February 12, 2018, to revise second entitled amendment to delete the reference in the first line to section 11 211 and to insert in its place section 11 214. Referred to finance. Ordered that the city I'm sorry, referred to ordinance. I'm sorry. Yes. Ordered that the City Council accepts and approves the tax increment exemption agreement between the City and South Shore Property Management, LLC of Tory Street, Unit 3 of Brockton, Mass., relative to the market rate housing uh, project proposed for 47 West Elm Street. Referred to finance. An appropriation of the total grant in the amount of $680,516 from the U.S. Department of Justice, Office of Justice Programs, Physical, Physical AT, Strategies for Police and Innovation Grant for the City of Brockton Police Department, Fiscal 18 Strategies for Police and Innovations Grant Fund. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a multi-year award with four annual budgets of $243,920. $211,832, $207,783, and $17,432, applying respectively beginning in 2018. Refer to the Committee on Finance. All these items on the agenda are available in their entirety for review in the City Clerk's Office for all interested parties. Councilors, next Monday night we will have finance. There's two items listed here, plus I need to look at the list that um, I still have uh, um, with Mel to see. I, I think there's Aquarius supposed to be coming. Did, did we do anything there, Council Fowl? I mean, where are we? I think we're leaving it in November. Or yeah, did you want to do uh, something? Or? Leave it table? Yeah, I guess we'll oh, leave it Leave it there. Yeah. Oh, leave it there on the agenda. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, well it's, it's on my, it's on an agenda. But I mean, do I pull it forward because we're going to send out letters of notice if that's what I'm asking? Yeah. Which would you like to do? You want to do it? Or? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll talk to her then.
and see where we're at. And then the streets, I know, Council Lally, you have, you have a lot, several streets, but we'll hear them in the uh, first week in uh, December. Okay, and um, then November 27th, we're back here, and then do we go back to the Little Theater for December, or where uh, are we going? The in December going to the moon? is here. Okay. It's here. Okay. December 5th, I believe it is. Okay. After that, we can go back to the Little Theater. So we'll be here the first? December 5th. Okay. Third. Third. Okay, so then you have to pay attention. You also have to pay attention to when you get to your Christmas week because I think Christmas is Tuesday, Wednesday. I think we meet that Wednesday of the, of the 27th, I think it is. It's a Wednesday or Thursday, so keep that in mind. You, you don't meet, you know, that week's a little little crazy. But we'll get to that one. We'll deal with that one. Um, any other items? Otherwise, I, I do, Sullivan, yeah, I, saw, yeah, I just want to remind everybody, I have an ordinance meeting um, a week from tonight. Um, it's going to be uh, uh, the 20th uh, at 6.30, not 6 o'clock. It's not in here. It's in the cafeteria right next door. Okay. 6.30, not 6 o'clock in the cafeteria. Again, the two agenda items will be on the marijuana issue that we've been vetting out for God knows how long. Okay. So, right. see you next Tuesday. So it's next Tuesday? Huh? What are the dates? Next Tuesday. 20th. 6.30. 6.30 in the cafeteria of our school. Cafeteria here. And the president's going to bring donuts and coffee. That's right. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. I'll do it. Monahan doesn't do it anymore, so I'll do it. Yeah. Council raise that. A moment of personal privilege. Yes, you may, Councilor. Yeah, so what? I would just like to uh, wish a very happy belated birthday to our Ward 4 City Council, Susan DeCastro, who hey. celebrated hey. his birthday yesterday. Hey. Happy birthday. A secret, Shirley. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, not thank you very much. Council of Beauregard. Thank you. Moment of personal privilege. Yes, you may not. Thank yes, you, you may. Yeah. 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 Just so everyone realizes, uh, you know, this discussion about real estate. Uh, this, our property in our city is a lot more valuable, unfortunately, people perceive sometimes. And that is a frustration. And we get these developers in sometimes that are rather progressive and other times not so much. I have had two RMPs come in front of me over property in this city. And I will say I worked with Michael Morrison, the head of procurement, and he's been terrific, okay? And I worked with the um, director of planning, Rob May, and the director of Rock Redevelopment Authority, BRA, uh, I'm sorry, um, Robert Jenkins. And we thoroughly went through these things. I mean, the, the fat packets of information and proposals. And the thing is, is that some of them were not, to, you know, could not meet the proper criteria. So that is one thing I can honestly say people can feel really, truly good about. Okay, they cannot put this information out to the public because it is not a you know, binding contract. It's, a, I would say it's somewhat correspondence in a sense. But that, that's what I want people to understand. I voted no this evening because I believe, like my colleague, we should look at the true value of our property in the city. Because over and over again, we have this mentality that we're the lesser. And everyone needs to, how would I say, revisit that. Because if we're so inferior, then why do we seem to be the community that is providing for an entire county and some of the surrounding communities that are out, outside Bristol and Norfolk County, the services individuals need medically and professionally and, and, and other treatments and in other areas. And we seem to be providing manufacturing and, in, and industry, and in some instances for over 100 years. And that, it just, that is why I wanted this dialogue to transpire and we got somewhere and that people don't realize that something comes in front of us in real estate and it's looked at as property when it really needs to be looked at as progress and a revision and plans to better see our city for what it is. I myself don't think the Howard School is an eyesore. I think it's a really attractive building that would make a pretty funky type of restaurant that I see in other communities that we don't get the chance to see. And I know because I have an invisible restaurant in my ward not bringing no revenue, no food, by the way, and no jobs. It's so anyway, funky. but... It's not funky but, then, right? No, it's not <laughs> funky. No, it's, it's rather unattractive. Oh, it is. 
But anyway, in all honesty, we've seen this in other communities, and I believe that we need to set an example and continue to encourage others to see what Brockton can be and not what pro people want Brockton to be that are outside of our community. So anyway, thank you. Just, um, I, I just want to make one point, too, before we all depart, because uh, I've noticed, um, and I'm going to check it out tomorrow, I didn't have a chance to today, but uh, keep an eye because we're, and I'm seeing two signs in my ward where there's auctions going on on some pieces of property, which I have a little bit of concern about. So I'm going to, as, as you know, we do not have a particular person in, in place that's doing the auction. I don't know who's actually doing them through, I'm sure it's probably, you know, through in-house and through uh, uh, whether Mr. Murphy or either, you know, attorney and as irrelevant. I got to find out. But just be careful because all of a sudden uh, there have been properties that have just sat there and all of a sudden, boom, there's a big sign, there's an auction in a couple of weeks. So I'm going to make sure that I can find some information out and make sure that each of us ha has a list yes. so that at least we know it. Yes. I didn't even get well, one. We're getting a list. We're getting a list. Oh, sick me. Well, 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 I'll take their, care of that tomorrow with the Connor office. Yeah, yeah, copy. yeah, yeah. I didn't have a, I don't have a copy at all. Yeah. And I've already, uh, yeah. You know, I don't want my city things down. So, but in any case, I just want to bring attention just to just to be careful and watch out. Yeah. Any other anything else to come before this uh, council this evening? Seeing none. Amen. Amen. Amen.